Welcome to Joint School. Over the course of this presentation, we will prepare you for your total hip replacement surgery following the University Hospitals of Leicester Enhanced Arthroplasty Pathway. We will prepare you for various aspects of your journey from pre-assessment to going home. The hip is a ball and socket joint. The ball is formed by the head of the thigh bone, which fits into the socket, formed by part of the pelvis. The surfaces should normally be covered in a layer of smooth cartilage. However, with conditions such as osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or previous hip fractures, this cartilage has worn away, leading to pain and stiffness. A hip replacement involves removing the painful hip joint and replacing it with an artificial one. A modern artificial hip joint is designed to last for at least 15 to 20 years. The surgery itself usually takes around 1 to 2 hours to complete. These are the benefits of the surgery. It is normal to have some discomfort after surgery, but the majority of patients have significant pain relief after removal of the damaged surfaces of the joint. Pain from other causes or areas will unlikely change. The new artificial joint will have well-designed surfaces to allow the joint to move freely and smoothly. This will mean you should have less stiffness than before the surgery. However, you are required to complete exercises after your surgery to strengthen the muscles around the joint. With improved range of movement, reduced stiffness and pain, your overall mobility is likely to be improved. This should mean an improved quality of life dependent on your overall health. It is important that you're aware that there are risks when having this surgery. The risks are small but can be serious. The aim of the teams involved in your care is to reduce the risks as much as possible, but they cannot be eliminated completely. If you are concerned about any of the risks or possible complications, please discuss them with your surgeon or members of the multidisciplinary team to ensure that you are well informed. Keeping fit and healthy before your surgery will give you the best chance of success and you'll likely recover quicker. You should keep active and exercise regularly. Weight loss can improve the function of joints and reduce pain, as well as reduce the risk of other conditions such as diabetes and heart disease. You should maintain a healthy diet and stop smoking if applicable. Before you have your surgery, you will need to come into hospital to attend the pre-assessment clinic so we can assess whether you are fit to have this operation. This will also give you the opportunity to ask any questions you may have about your operation, what you need to know about coming into hospital and any questions about recovery and returning home after surgery. At the pre-assessment clinic, you will be seen by a nurse who will check your blood pressure and pulse, check your height and weight, carry out a test on your heart known as an ECG, take routine blood tests and take swabs to check for the MRSA infection. You will be asked about your current health and past medical history and any problems which you think may affect your discharge from hospital. These tests are routine as they provide an overall picture of your health. If the results show that you need treatment for something, you will be contacted and informed of what to do. You will also see a doctor who will examine you to make sure you are fit to have your operation. If x-rays or other tests are needed, these will be done during your attendance at clinic. Your consultant and or their registrar will explain the operation to you and answer any questions you may have. You need to make sure that you're prepared for the surgery. Here are some examples of how you can do this. This is the heights form which asks you to measure the height of chair, bed and toilet. You will need to complete this and bring this with you prior to surgery. It will allow us to replicate your furniture at home and therefore assist with our assessments. After your operation, you will be taken to the recovery room where you will stay until you are awake. You may not remember this, which is normal depending on what type of anaesthetic you may have had. You will be given oxygen until you no longer need it. You will be given fluids through a tube in your arm until you are able to drink normally. You will return to the ward once the recovery nurse is satisfied with your condition. Your temperature, blood pressure, pulse and breathing will be checked at regular intervals. The blood circulation in your operated leg will also be monitored. The anaesthetist will discuss pain relief with you when they visit you before your surgery. If you are in pain after surgery, please let the nurse know. 
Some people may feel sick after an anaesthetic, but we can give you something to relieve this. If you feel sick, please ask for help. The nurse will tell you when you can start to eat and drink. Pain is expected and is normal after your surgery. It is safe to move and mobilise with pain. You must engage with members of the physiotherapy, occupational therapy and the rest of the multidisciplinary team after your surgery despite pain. Your pain will be managed on the ward post-operatively by the nursing staff. You will be expected to get out of bed and sit into a chair as soon as possible. This will be done with the help of the nursing or therapy team using appropriate equipment to ensure that you are safe. It is expected that you start your mobility and exercises shortly after your anaesthetic has worn off. As soon as you are able, you will begin your assessment with the physiotherapy and occupational therapy team. This could be on the evening of your surgery. If a physiotherapist is unable to assess you on the evening of your surgery, you will still be expected to sit out of bed with the nursing staff's help. You can identify therapy staff on the ward. During physiotherapy, you will be assessed with various equipment and will progress to the appropriate walking aid to be discharged home with. This is likely to be elbow crutches or a walking frame provided by the physiotherapy team. You will aim to be discharged home using elbow crutches. When walking with crutches, you will firstly lead with the crutches placed forwards and wide, then step with your operated leg, then bring your good leg level. Take one step at a time, keeping the crutches in front of you for balance as shown in the video. Take your time, don't rush and don't make any sudden twists or turns. If you need to go up and down stairs at home, you will practice them in hospital before you are discharged. The physiotherapy team will show you the easiest and safest way of doing so. This video demonstrates how you will ascend the stairs leading with your non-operated leg. This video demonstrates how to descend the stairs safely leading with your crutches first, then your operated leg. If you have a step into your house, the physiotherapy team will show you the easiest and safest way of doing so before you go home. Similar to the stairs, you will lead with your non-operated leg going up and your operated leg going down. Exercise plays a key part in your rehabilitation. Walking is the best exercise after your operation, which you should do little and often and build up gradually. In the next slide, you will be shown four specific exercises that target your joint and muscles. You may like to start these before your surgery to build some strength. This video demonstrates your four exercises. You need to complete these three times daily. Hold on to something safe for balance. In the first exercise, you will lift your knee on the operated leg forward in front of you to bend your hip in a slow and controlled manner, gradually getting higher over time. For the second exercise, you will take your operated leg straight out sideways, keeping your torso upright and still. For the third exercise, you will take your operated leg straight out behind you, keeping your torso upright and still. For the fourth exercise, you will have feet shoulder width apart, pointing forwards. Bend your hips and knees to perform a mini squat, only as low as you feel comfortable. Please complete 10 repetitions of each exercise. If you are unable to do 10, do as many as you feel able to. Some patients, but not all, may be referred for further physiotherapy as an outpatient. This will be assessed by your physiotherapist and discussed with you before discharge. These appointments will help you to progress your mobility and form an individual exercise plan to achieve your goals. You will be referred to your nearest hospital if a follow-up is needed. You will be seen by an occupational therapist on the same day or the next day after your surgery. OTs will see you to discuss, practice and offer advice on how to manage everyday activities and encourage you to be as independent as possible. This will involve completing transfer assessments at home heights and how you are completing washing and dressing on the ward. You may be provided with equipment for home to assist with your transfers and enable you to be independent. 
If you have any concerns about how you will manage at home, please discuss them with a member of the OT team. These are some of the assessments that you will complete whilst on the ward. For example, you should avoid sitting on low chairs and ensure they are firm. It may help you to add an extra cushion to raise up a low seat if needed. You'll be assessed getting on and off a toilet and how you are managing washing and dressing on the ward. If needed, you will be provided with equipment to help you with this. You'll also be assessing how you're managing to get in and out of bed. OTs may carry out a kitchen assessment with you at the hospital if you feel you're unable to manage this. We may provide you with kitchen trolley or high stool if you do not have table or chairs in your kitchen or anyone to help you at meal times. This will be discussed with you during the assessment. Care should be taken when getting in and out of a car. Avoid low height chairs. We will go through the technique with you on the ward. After surgery, you will be following either standard or enhanced hip precautions as shown on screen. These will be confirmed by your surgeon post-operatively. These will be reinforced while you are on the ward. Please take time to pause the video and read the precautions. As part of your hip precautions, you should not be bending past 90 degrees. Your OT will show you how to dress and undress using long-handled aids. You should avoid wearing tight clothing and we recommend that you wear supportive shoes that do not have buckles or laces. Please take time to watch this video on how to dress yourself. Please watch this video on how to undress after surgery. This video demonstrates how to get into a car following your surgery. You will need to sit in the front passenger seat, ensuring that the chair is pushed back fully to increase leg room. A plastic bag can be placed on the front passenger seat. This will help you turn into the car more easily. You will walk up to the car using your walking aid, turning backwards until you can feel the car seat on the backs of your legs. You can pass your walking aids to the driver. Lower yourself down slowly with your operated leg placed forwards using the dashboard or door frame, but do not use the door itself as this may disrupt your balance. Ensure the bag is removed from under you before driving off. This video demonstrates how to get out of a car. This is a reverse procedure of what you were shown in the first video. Recline your car seat back, bring your legs out onto the flat of the road with your operated leg slightly forward. Push up from the dashboard, door frame or overlapped crutches. Again, do not use the door to assist your stand as you may lose your balance. Driving is allowed when she feels safe to do so. It is advisable to try sitting in the car first and taking a short drive initially. Ensure that you're not on any medication that causes drowsiness and that you are able to do an emergency stop. You should also check with your car insurance company if they require you to wait a certain length of time before driving after an operation. Before discharge, you will be taken through a routine x-ray to check the position of your new joint replacement. You will need to be independently mobile and safe, having completed all necessary assessments with the therapy team. You will aim to be discharged the same day or the day after your surgery. You will be discharged complete with any necessary medication, sick notes and GP practice or nursing letters. When to seek help after discharge, please contact the ward you were discharged from if you have any of the following. Leakage from your surgical wound, swelling or inflammation around the wound, a sudden increase in pain. Please seek urgent medical attention either through the 111 NHS helpline or 999 or the emergency department if you begin to have painful or tender calves, have shortness of breath, have chest pain, or generally feel unwell. Here are some of the frequently asked questions. Will the pain go after the operation? After the operation, the joint and wound may be painful and sore, but the discomfort should improve quickly. Painkillers will be prescribed if needed. Pain will improve as time goes on. 
What about housework? Do not stand for long periods at first. Try to spread the housework evenly throughout the week and gradually increase the amount you do over time. Start with seated tasks for the first few weeks. What about sport? Get advice from your doctor or consultant before returning to or starting any physical sports or activities. When can I have sex after my operation? You should avoid having sex for at least six weeks. Be careful and consider a more inactive role for a further six weeks to avoid strain on your new hip. How long will an artificial joint last? Techniques for joint replacement are improving all the time and a new joint may last for 20 years. If you have any questions, please write them down and ask a member of the pre-assessment team or therapy team on the wards. To summarise, you must prepare for your surgery. Pain is expected and normal. Mobilising is essential and safe. You will be expected to get out of bed to commence mobility and exercises as soon as safely possible after your surgery. You are expected to go home on the day of or day after your surgery when safe to do so and you must have somebody stay with you for 24 hours after your surgery. Thank you for attending Joint School. We hope that you have found this presentation useful and that you feel prepared for your surgery. We look forward to supporting you on your journey.